All right. Well, welcome back. I see most of you stayed on the call with me, so thanks for joining in. And I want to talk about margin protection insurance for 2023. And normally in the past years, uh, we haven't done this this early, but I think we also missed the boat by not getting ahead of the game a little bit. Uh, if we wait until August or September, uh, I know most producers are getting busy by then. And so I, I wanted to start a little bit quicker this year because the markets have given us good opportunities where they're at right now. Uh, I've, I've been fearing for a while that, I hope I'm wrong, but I've been fearing that we're in this window of kind of like we were after 2012, where prices went to high levels. Uh, we started seeing demand reduction. We start seeing increased supply, and then prices start to wander lower over the next few years, and like we did in 13 and 14. Uh, so I don't know if that'll happen yet this year or not, but if we have good crops, you know, you would expect going into next year that prices could continue to start to start to work a little bit lower. So I wanted to talk about this program and we do have a handout uh, in case you if you do subscribe to the uh, market report in the afternoon. I've been attaching this to it. But why margin protection for next year and why now? Why do we want to talk about it today instead of waiting until later? Well, before I get into all of that, just a few details for those not familiar with margin protection insurance. It is a 95% county-based policy. Uh, there's one other one that's like it, similar. Uh, that's ECO, Enhanced Coverage Option. Both of those are 95% county-based policies. Uh, the difference is, big difference is, well, we'll get into some of that right now. Uh, they do use the same yields. All county insurance products now do use the same yields. SCO, Supplemental Coverage, ECO, the RPI, the old GRIP policy, all of these use the same county yields. Uh, margin protection does have a protection factor. You can add anywhere from 0.8 up to 1.2. So the idea there is, is that if the county has a loss and you have a 1.2 protection factor, you're going to get paid 1.2 times the loss. So if you want to take into account that your yields may be a little different than the county, maybe using the protection factor helps get you more dollars. Uh, the base prices get set August 15 to set 14. So we're about a month away from starting to do that. Sales closing date is September 30th, and this policy sets its harvest input prices in April for the inputs. Uh, the inputs we're talking about, the variable inputs, are urea, DAP, potash, diesel fuel, and interest rates. Those beginning prices are all set here in the fall, but the harvest prices for those are set in April, except for interest rates. That and the harvest grain price are going to be set in October, same as all the other revenue pop prices. Here's where it's available. Here's where it was available last year, I should say. These were last year's maps. We have not seen updated maps this year. I'm sure there's a couple of you on the market or on the call right now that are in areas that are in the white right now. And I know that the, the RMA has been asked to add a few different counties around the country. So if you were thinking about that, and you haven't heard, now would be the time to contact somebody. ASAP, if you think you want to get a county added, now would be the time to do it before we see the final release come out here, probably in, in late August uh, for this coming year. Reasons I like margin protection, because it's subsidized at a 95% level. Uh, this and ECO are the only policies that are subsidized at 95%. The government's picking up I think about 44% of this policy cost. So I, I think that's a good deal. Uh, it's a put option for next year's crop. I view margin, I'm a market guy. I like to, how do I protect price for next year? I look at this like I'm setting a price floor for next year, essentially. So, and I could do it here in August, August, September timeframe. If I'm not doing anything else for next year, if I'm not going to market the crop for next year, this is one way I can lock something in versus sitting and doing nothing and hoping that come February that the price is still good. Uh, reason I want to do it, this is, a, a and Watson Associates, we work with very closely uh, on some private products, but Watts put, and Watts was the company that built margin protection insurance, and this is a price chart that they put together showing the seasonality of corn price over 25 years. And this right here from on the right-hand side is the actual growing season from April to August or April to September. This is the growing season. 
oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, the middle part of this, April to October is the physical growing season for the crop. They extend this a, a year early and a year later. A year early for the people that want to forward sell or use a product like margin protection. A year later for those of you that put it all in the bin and wait. And so you can kind of see when, when the highs and lows are typically made. And the highs for over the last 25 years have been made a year ahead of time for the crop, a year and a half ahead of harvest. June or May, June of now for 23 is typically when the high would have been made. And so we kind of saw that here, you know, two, three, four weeks ago. But we're still into this August, September window right here where typically prices are still pretty good relative to where they'll be next fall in fall of 23. And so this policy uses the average August, September price compared to the October price next harvest. So what, 13, 14 months away uh, is what you're comparing it to. Uh, expenses have become a big part of this policy. In the in, Up until this past year, we really had not seen a big change in the variable input costs. This year, threw all that out the window. Uh, we saw some big moves in these input prices. Now, for next year, uh, you know, we well, this is a uh, and hydrous price, I guess. So this is 22. This is still holding pretty strong. I'll show you next year's here in a minute. But this past year, urea, uh, DAP, uh, diesel, everything went way up after we set the prices back in the fall last year. We set prices in September through the winter and into early spring. Those prices went way up. That helped the policy or anybody that had this policy got help uh, from the policy to offset those input prices going up. We'll show that here in a minute. Um, and you get to add cheap revenue protection in February. So because you are you already have a 95% policy, you've got X amount of dollars of coverage. And the government will basically give you an incentive to, to buy an underlying revenue policy on your farm. So if you decide you wanna buy 80% policy on the farm, that'll take 80% of those dollars off of your MP policy. So the government's gonna give you a credit for doing that. They're going to say, okay, if you're going to buy this, then we're going to give you a credit against the MP. Because let's say for margin protection, you had $1,000 of coverage. If I'm going to replace that with $800 of revenue on my farm, I don't need that $800 on the margin. I get credit. So my margin then is only $200. Your farm is $800. So they're giving you a credit to do it. And oftentimes we've seen that that credit is enough to pay for most of, if not the entire cost of that individual policy. So you can basically convert county level protection to individual protection for little or no cost. So that's a, that's a positive. You get the best of both worlds. You get your individual coverage up to a certain level, just in case you get the county coverage up to 95%. And the fifth one I like is it's the lar we've seen the largest net margins that we've ever been able to lock in since we've had this policy in place. And that goes back to 2016 when it was a, uh, a trial policy in Iowa. Then we started being able to offer it in some other states. But let's take a quick look back to 2021. We had the final county yield numbers come out here in June. And so we can go back and look at what some of those payments would look like. And in 21, this is Sangamon County, Illinois where the county yield went from expected at 219.7, went down to 215.2 in the, uh, at the end of the year. Not a big drop, but because input costs in 21 went from 318 to 366, they ended up getting a payment of $15.72. So it basically was triggered by the, call, by the input costs going up. Really didn't have, you know, that yield drop was not 5%. So the, yeah, that helped uh, go into the math, but you wouldn't have got a payment just based on yield drop. It was also because of the drop in the input or the rise in input costs. Um, and I can look around different areas uh, in the Midwest. Now this is not identical to margin protection, but this is uh, from FarmDoc showing the difference between what the expected county yields were back in 21 versus what they ended up being. And so the red and pink areas were the, were the counties that would have triggered the biggest county losses or potential payments for margin protection, for ECO, GRIP, all of those uh, different county products. And you can see in you know, a couple counties in Northwest, Southeast Iowa, Northwest Illinois, 
got a few Missouri counties, some, but a lot up in the upper Midwest that year would have triggered some pretty good sized payments. Uh, and in fact, I ran this for Edmonds County, uh, South Dakota on soybeans. Edmonds County triggered a payment, $245 an acre on beans. They had an expected county yield at 38 bushels. Final county yield was 20. And so that was drought related. Input costs went up a little bit, but the policy paid $245. Uh, if a producer in Edmonds County, a lot of guys there are buying 75% RP coverage, 75% RP policy would have barely started to trigger a loss versus this policy paying 245 bucks an acre. Uh, and you can see the counties where beans saw the biggest drops versus expected county yields. Again, the upper Midwest last year was really the area. Uh, spring wheat, this is in Cavalier County, North Dakota. And that county went from 64 bushel expected to 43. Input costs went up from 120 to 141. Payment would have been $222 an acre. So even with the wheat price going up, uh, because the input costs went up as well and the yield drop, we saw some significant payments. So uh, who knows in a given year, I, I didn't show all of the corn ones, but there were some corn counties that saw some two, $300 an acre payments as well. So, you know, a lot of it depends on yield, but a lot of it depends on prices. And we did see the impact from the inputs that year. So what's happening in 2022, we're right in the you know middle of the growing season. These numbers were all established last fall. So you can see the bottom line here were the urea, the DAP, and the diesel prices that were established back in August, September of last year for this year's crop. The top green line were the averages in April. And you can see how these numbers went up substantially. Now we saw this big rally in March, prices started to come back down in April a little bit, but urea price, you know, we had gone from what, $450 to over $700. Uh, DAP had gone from 600 to 900. Diesel had gone from $2 to three, almost $4 a, a, a gallon. So the impact of that right now, and again, we're still in the middle of the growing season, but I ran this for Warren County, Illinois. It's up in the Northwest part of the state. And the impact of those input costs going up, you can see here in the gray boxes, we've gone from four, $414 expected costs to $532. So your, your variable inputs, just those, really those three so far, you readapt, diesel, interest rates are also going up and won't, won't be final until fall. But just based on inputs alone, and I'm using a yield unchanged, 222.6, just based on inputs alone, Warren County be getting back a payment of $57.80. And I would assume most counties around the, the Midwest where this is available, especially, would be looking at a similar indemnity payment if the county yield was unchanged. Of course, if your county yield goes up, then your indemnity goes down. If your county yield goes down versus expected, your indemnity goes higher. So we've got a lot of moving parts still between now and the end of the year. Uh, the corn price, the harvest price is going to matter as well. So we still have quite a few moving parts. But I really just wanted to show what the impact of the input prices going urea from 452 to 745, DAP going up $300, diesel interest, what that impact is on the policy as of right now. So we'll continue to monitor this as we go forward. So looking ahead to 2023, well, the questions I've got for next year, uh, quite a few really, I mean, will needed inputs be available? You know, that was a big subject this spring. And I think we all, you know, we kind of had a sigh of relief that we, we did get things. Uh, the, as we needed them. But what's going to happen next year? Uh, and at what prices? That's the other topic. Um, will grain prices slide? Uh, we'll go back to inputs. I saw a story here the other day that uh, what the U.S. has been an exporter of nitrogen, I guess, here this summer. Uh, we had excess nitrogen at the Gulf and other places. So we've been selling it overseas. Will that come back to hurt us? I, I don't know. But I, that that has been a story. So uh, anyway, uh, will grain prices slip? Will interest rates keep climbing? Will land prices stay hot? What's going to happen to world acreage? Will it expand? I think we're seeing stories that Brazil continue to expand acres. So, uh, you know, that's the big one. So to try to answer these, margin protection insurance, I view margin as put options. So I, I'm, I'm kind of calling them margin put options. And I realize, and we've all seen the impact of input costs and certainly bushels as well, 
But this early in the year, I'm really looking at utilizing this policy to help protect price. And so right now we're at 553 a bushel, December 23 corn. We're gonna start setting the, the base prices a month from now. I don't know where we're gonna be a month from now. Uh, granted, we're not at 660 like we were you know, three, four weeks ago, but we're above 506. And if you look at the potential margin of, uh, available for next year, uh, we're still looking at some really good numbers, even at 553. And so my, the way I view margin protection, at least this early, is that it's like a put option, but two things are going to affect what the strike price is on my put option. The county yield, how the yield changes will certainly impact it, and the variable input costs will impact it. We've seen both of those in the last two years have big impacts in certain parts of the country. So the way I look at, at this at 553, and again, I'm going back to Warren County, the example I just showed you a minute ago, at 553 corn at 222 bushels at 95%, that gives me $1,166 in revenue trigger, minus my input cost. But $1,166, I think I can make a profit there. And if my input costs were to stay unchanged and my county yield stayed unchanged, then it would take a 5% drop in price to trigger a payment, which would be five and a quarter from 553. Would I like to have a price floor next year at five and a quarter? Could I live with that? I think I could. Could corn go into the fours next year? I think it could. So, you know, or do I want to sit and wait until February and see what happens with prices in February and buy my revenue insurance then? I think those are really your choices. Uh, or do I forward sell a bunch of corn? And I don't think any of us are going to run out the door and go sell a bunch of 553 corn today. So I, I think this is the way I like to look at it today. But I also know that the input side of things, I, I think there's a good chance input prices could be higher next spring like they were this year. Uh, county yields next year, who knows? We're a, way, way too far away from 23 to know what's going to happen on the yield side. But I like to look at it mainly from a price perspective at this early point. Similar to soybeans. Uh, you know, if we started at 1242 today, I hope we're higher. But if I had a 65 bushel county yield at 95%, I've got a $767 revenue trigger minus my input costs. Uh, if we don't see a change in the inputs or the yield, then 95% of 1242 is 1180. Is that great? Well, not great, but could be worse. So, you know, there's a way you can protect that price. Spring wheat. Guys, uh, anybody spring wheat, uh, the upper Midwest, 919 right now on Minneapolis 23 September wheat at 65 bushels at 95% gives me a $567 wheat trigger, which is phenomenal looking at the history of this policy. At 919 at 95% on price, it's 873. It would give me essentially a price floor with an unchanged yield and, and unchanged inputs. And I think if I'm in spring wheat country, I'm probably gonna be looking to jump on this this year. You go, it wasn't more than 18 months ago, we were sitting at six bucks on spring wheat. So I, I think that, you know, there's some good opportunities here. What are we gonna do with inputs? Well, here's where the inputs are trending right now. These are the weekly numbers. So these are nearby prices. But if you look back to last year, uh, on DAP, you know, in August, September, we were hovering down a little above $600 a ton, went to a thousand bucks a ton in the spring. Now here we are back in the 780s. So, you know, we're going to be setting this in about a month. So we'll see where the prices are at then. But if I can lock in something with seven, 800 buck DAP versus potential of going to a thousand bucks, looks like a pretty good deal. Urea, you know, we mentioned that the market's been kind of flooded with uh, nitrogen. So nitrogen prices have come way back down. Could that change come next spring? Yeah, I think it could. If, if you know, depending on what people do this fall, uh, you know, if we see a lot of prepay, et cetera. But I, I certainly think there could be some upside risk. Does anybody think diesel prices are going to stay where they're at? Will they go back up? Absolutely. So, I, you know, I think being able to lock in something with these variable input prices here in the fall makes some sense to me as well. So lastly, the point I want to make is compared to last year, and last year we were looking at revenue uh, or at the triggers from margin protection being the highest they'd ever been. And so this was a county, I believe in Indiana, uh, Wabash County, Indiana, last year had a trigger margin 
Now, this is your expected revenue that we looked at a minute ago, times 95% minus your, uh, or minus the deductible, I should say, uh, minus your input costs. That's how you come up with the margin. And the trigger was $516 an acre. So if the margin got tighter than 516, it was gonna pay. Right now with the corn price where it's at, the trigger margin would be 578 for next year. So even though the price has come down quite a bit over the last month, we're still looking at picking up an extra $62 in trigger margin. That's even taken out the input costs. So to me, you know, that's if, the, if it looked like a good deal last year, it looks like an even better deal this coming year. And this is what that looked like graphically in the years that we've had this policy for Wabash County and just about every county is going to look very similar, but you can see the, the trend here all of a sudden. Now, again, this is margin. This is what you're making at the end of the year, or essentially what the county's making. It's not revenue. You know, this is taking into account input costs going up and the margin's still looking at the highest it's ever been. Uh, one last thing before I, uh, before I slip away from that, we do have a great tool uh, for those of you that have access to NAU country software, we do have access uh, to a, um, a product on Watson Associates website to be able to go in and show you the, the crop values uh, at different prices and different uh, yields. We can click on different insurance products. We can click on uh, adding the indemnity, taking out the premium. But I did all of those. I bought margin protection in this example, and I uh, calculate the crop value plus the indemnity payment if there's a loss, minus the cost of the policy. And what I think is interesting is every square on here is over a thousand, over $1,100 an acre. 1152, I believe is the lowest one here. And so if your cost of production is 900, 950, maybe some cases $1,000 an acre, uh, you know, we're looking at being able to lock in $152 minimum profit for next year. Right now, if the prices stay where they're at here, uh, in August and September. And so that's what I really wanted to point out with this, uh, this uh, worksheet. We could add the underlying revenue protection policy as well. If you want to do that, you could just look at RP only and compare the two. You know, if you buy 85% RP versus 95 or MP, you know, we can do a lot of different things with this thing. But I, I think it's pretty, to me, it's pretty amazing that we've got an opportunity. We've got a policy that allows us to lock in a you know, a, a net margin for next year this early in the game. And if we end up raising 260 bushel corn next year at $5, then great. Uh, we'll do that instead, but, uh, or $6 or whatever the number is. But if we can't, we've at least got the opportunity to do this. So uh, again, my, my, my fear is, uh, you know, I'm still fearing that we're in a 2013 type situation or 14 where prices are coming down off of record highs. We're seeing an increase in production. We're seeing maybe a decrease in demand as well. I hope not, but uh, that's kind of what USDA is starting to kind of show us in some of these numbers. So uh, if I can get something locked in for 23, I, I think it's a good opportunity. So we also have a product. Um, I talked about our powered a little while ago. NAU Country has a product called Empowered, which is available in some states, uh, which does allow you to choose a price on a given day. You could choose your months and your half months. So for example, now this 10-day, this eight 10-day interval is already behind us. But for example, let's say that I buy margin protection here and the price ends up at 550 for August, September. Um, I'm also gonna be able to add my revenue protection policy in February and that'll have a February average. And maybe I'm concerned what happens if we have a drought rally next June. I could add the month of June to that policy with Empowered as well. And so then I would have this fall price, the February price, the June price. So if I'm concerned about prices changing dramatically between now and October of 2023, when the policy expires, we can utilize this product to be able to do that as well. <coughs> so talk to your agent and uh, see what that would cost to do that. We've also got some new flyers for the agents that are on the call. Uh, we've got some new flyers that should be hot off the press with some changes and some tweaks. So check that out if you wanna share these with your uh, producers. So anyway, uh, if you've got any questions, I should have mentioned, you could throw those in the chat box. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you and I uh, would encourage you to, uh, to consider this uh, type of a policy for this coming year. We'll start 
talking and I'll be writing more about it as we get into the uh, pricing period here in August. And uh, we'll see uh, see what the numbers show us. But uh, barring any huge significant moves, I, I think that we've got some great opportunities uh, to utilize this policy again next year. So seeing no, uh, no questions, I appreciate your uh, visiting with you and look forward to doing it again in the future. So thank you much and have a very uh, safe and uh, safe month ahead. We'll talk to you again in August.